life is too short to spend time doing something that doesn't feel right to you, that doesn't feel good to you, and that just doesn't feel aligned. Hey there everybody it's Erica here so excited to have Brianna Aponte here with me today I love this girl with my whole heart already so I wanted to share her with you without further ado I would love to introduce Brianna Brianna yes, come on hello, in. hello. <laughs> thank you so much for having me and girl yes same definitely <laughs> feeling they're mutual we had so much fun and I'm just so happy to be here and thankful for the opportunity and can you share with everyone just tell them what you do a little bit about your business my company is called All About It. We work specifically with women who are creatives, entrepreneurs, and professionals who are looking to create a life they love through building their brand, growing an online presence, and ultimately turning their passions into profit. We started to branch off into individual businesses. I call them our sister companies, All About Your Brand and All About Your Space. So All About Your Brand is all of the one-on-one -on -one services, all the things that it takes to grow an active brand and to manage and maintain it. And I have such a passion for interior design, anything that has to do with turning something that's ugly and unfunctional to something that's strategic, structural, and beautiful to look at. So naturally, I started to offer these services where we would curate spaces for our clients. And then I was like, what the heck? Make this a business. And that business now offers home organizing, custom closets, and curated spaces. And it just goes hand in hand. So it's really cool. Brianna and I have so much in common. We do a lot of the same things with our businesses. Just love having you here. So fun that we have so much in common. We both love working on branding, social media. I love that we both care about interiors and design. I think it's just so fun. Talk to us about your background. I started off with a dance studio because I was dancing for the MBA. I had a passion for dance and I love teaching. So I was like, oh, let me have a studio. I could teach both kids and adults and create a safe space for women as a college dropout. Proved my mama wrong. She was very happy when she saw the money rolling in. I was like, see, it can work if you do it right. It was interesting learning how to basically build a business and I ended up getting into branding because when I was this broke college dropout kid who went and found investors, got this building, spent thousands of dollars in renovations and just things that at my age, I wasn't aware that I didn't need, but that I wanted. I was forced to figure out branding because I couldn't afford to hire professionals. And what happened was I became really good at branding. What I was able to do is take advantage of social media. Although some months my studio was barely making rent. It was very expensive. I got in a super expensive business, didn't really know what I was doing, but I did build a very successful brand. And people started asking questions about that. How did you build your brand? Or how'd you grow so many followers on Instagram? Instagram, or how did you start a business with no experience, no knowledge, no degree? And I was sharing what I knew that turned into me starting a company, coaching other women, how to do what I did. Life is too short to spend time doing something that doesn't feel right to you. That doesn't feel good to you. And that just doesn't feel aligned. And when I took that leap and was like, I'm quitting, I didn't know what my life was going to look like. All I knew was what I was currently doing wasn't working and wasn't getting me to where I wanted to be. The best way you can learn is to try something mistakes try again do it better and that was a real big turning point for me so everything I do now in my life I always go back to life is short you have to do what you want to do and spend your time how you want to spend it because you don't know how long you're going to be here so you really got to make it what you want it to be you have to create a life you love and we're yeah. the ones that hold the paintbrush as if we're an artist we're the ones who have to shape our lives, regardless of what circumstances we've been through, what traumatic experiences we've been through, we have to narrate the story. We need to make the decision, realign ourselves or to find a new path or to find a way of healing or to find a better way. I love that so much. And I think it's important for everyone to hear life is hard. Things come up for everyone. This is not easy for anyone. Yeah. We have control to make changes when we don't want things to go the way they're going or when we want to improve. Same thing goes for our businesses. If we don't love the way something is, we're ultimately in control of that. How did you go from the dance studio into this branding work? When did that shift happen? So I am from Cleveland, Ohio. My studio was in downtown Cleveland. My now husband lived in DC and I had met him through a mutual friend. And eight months later, I circled back because he was in property management. And I was like, I think I want to take my studio to an area that I can have 
have three different locations. And instead of having my own physical location, just have partnerships with studios that are already up and running. This was the start of me saying, okay, I need to work smart, not hard, because having my studio space, it was hard. So I made a transition from Cleveland to the DMV, and I was teaching classes in DC, Virginia, and Maryland once a week, and that was my jam. The first thing that I did was I did a tour. So for one year, I just took what I was doing in these locations, and I did them in major cities across the US, really just to figure out what women who were a part of my brand, what they wanted. So we were doing brand and brunch, sip and paints, different events like yoga, and just getting to know the women. And within that year, I gathered so much information. And what I found out was that everybody wanted to have a brand or business. It went from me teaching my classes and making, it would be anywhere from 500 to 1500 a class to doing $50 calls. I was like, what am I doing? Like $50 oh. one hour calls. That's where it started. And most of them were free too. I did free calls. The $50 call was if you actually booked a service call over the course of three months, what happened was the calls that I was doing, those coaching calls, I was able to determine what they needed. My husband actually quit his job. He learned from YouTube University how to take pictures, how to take videos. And so we combined his skill set of creating content and my skill set of strategizing and branding, and we created the company together. We actually ran the company full time with each other for three years before he stepped away. That really was the change. It was my thought of why am I doing this one thing in this one location when I can move somewhere, have a fresh start. That move was major for me because it put me in a space where I was very uncomfortable. I was not in a familiar space. So I was forced to grow at a quicker rate. That was the best decision I ever could have made. I think what's important to note is that what we start out with is not always where we end up. Can you tell people fast forward to today? How do you help entrepreneurs with all that research that you did? We have very extensive workflows automated from A to Z. This is what has to happen to work with a client. But so much of our workflow is custom because we're in a space where, ah, like this client is different. We have to do this. We have to do that. So I basically created three pillars. It's think it, brand it, and build it. Before we talk anything about branding, social media content, we handle the think it stuff first. So that's all of the strategic building and strategizing. And I'm very transparent about letting them know if you're going to work with me, I am going to be honest. And sometimes I might be telling you that something doesn't make sense. And the reason why I am so bold in telling you that is because I wish that I was told that at times when I was doing things that didn't make sense, get down to the core of what they're offering and what problem they're solving and how are they solving it uniquely. There's so many businesses out there that can do the same thing. But the thing that is going to make it different is the client experience, the team that they're working with, even for you and your team, you are so personable that someone would work with you because of just having a conversation with you. And that is what makes you unique is that they have this personal connection. So I work on finding all the ways in which we can make them unique. And then secondly, once we have all the strategies figured out, we focus on the look and aesthetic of it. Once we're in the branding phase and all of that is done, we then go into the build it. And this is one of the major things that makes us different from other agencies is our brand shoot service. We have studios and teams in Miami, Atlanta, Charlotte, Houston, and DC. Our our clients based on whichever location that they're closest to they'll go to that location and we do three five or eight look shoot in one hour they can have months of content and clients are always super shocked because they're like wait I'm done already and they're like but is that gonna be enough and I'm like oh you'll see we're able to generate months of content and then decide for each client what looks different some of them might only post reels some of them might post reels and social media templates some of them might only post imagery but each client's post strategy is created specifically for them when it comes to social media I am not that you have to post every day twice a day person I think that's bananas that coaches will just say that to people so we always work with our clients from a personal space of what does your life look like what makes sense for you when it comes to content creation do you like creating videos because if you don't we're not gonna make a super heavy video strategy for you it's not gonna make sense maybe we're gonna have you create video once a quarter and we'll take those videos and we'll generate all of this reusable content that could be used in a video format that way you can protect your peace and not feel like you're jumping on the trending social media train and feeling inauthentic to who you are still get the same results what type of entrepreneurs do you work with so first and foremost we work with women it's the creative entrepreneur and professional who are starting to get into the space of influencing so they want to do brand partnerships or they want to build a brand maybe they're selling clothing or an amazon store affiliate marketing and that's really more of our clientele our one-on-one -on -one services majority are all 
authors, women who have private practices. So whether they're counselors, doctors, online coaches that are pretty much teaching whatever it is that they do. And for creatives, it's usually women who have digital businesses where they do something similar to you and I, where it's all about creating seamless branding for a client or managing their social media. But really it's women who are doing something that they want to coach to others or women who are creating the content and the branding. People that we work with are in the service industry, floral designer, wedding planner, renting a venue as a caterer, realtors, interior designers, any service that makes sense as to why our process is different because people that we work with need different things. They both work. And I think that's really important for entrepreneurs to realize that we both got to our process of helping people in a different way. We both came up with a completely different process and they both work. And I think that is so important for people to understand because how many ads a day do you get from this coach saying, do this and that coach saying, do that. And this company saying, all you need is this. So what you need to do essentially is figure out the business owner, the entrepreneur, you need to think, okay, how do I want to do this? Right. And what is my business and which industry expert or coach or leader fits into the way I want to build my business. You have to tailor the strategy. I wanted to ask you too, as an entrepreneur, what are some of the harder things that you've had to do in order to get where you are now? The first thing I would say, hiring a team, I went about it just completely wrong. The first two to honestly three times. Now I feel confident in how I'm hiring, how I'm training, how I'm onboarding, how I'm just growing a team in general. And I think the biggest issue with me, I have such fun girlfriend and energy that my team felt like I was their girlfriend and not their boss. And I was the one that created that because in my previous business, it was very girlfriend. I was teaching dance classes. So you didn't have to have a certain level of respect for me. So that was hard. I had to read a lot of books, listen to a lot of podcasts to really figure out how do I find a balance between being a boss and also making my team feel comfortable and safe and enjoy my energy without overstepping that boundary and feeling like they're a friend. That was probably the biggest hurdle for me. Another big problem or something that I had to overcome was system, CRM, project management, what's going to be the thing that can streamline my business the best. And obviously you and I both know this, you know, over time systems upgrade, they start adding different features. So a lot of the times I was working with a system that promised that, oh, these features would launch by the end of this year. And I'm like, okay, if that's the case, this is better than this option. And I would go with this option. The year goes by, I'm in that system for another year. And I'm like, Hey people, you said these features (laughs) were going to launch. And as a business grows without certain features, you're working super hard. You're not streamlining things. The big aha moments that I had was originally, I was always thinking about the client experience and what CRM would give them the best experience. But no matter what CRM I would use, clients would just communicate via email. They would never actually go into their portal to have conversations. So I was like, okay, let's switch up the thinking and create a CRM that's more for my team to give an experience so that we're not missing things and everyone feels like they're on the same page. You have to experiment and find the best thing for your team and the way that your business runs. That's why having some kind of system for growth is so essential. Be able to stop spinning your wheels and to say, let me follow the system that I need to do in order to get from here where I am to here where I want to go with the least amount of frustration possible. That is so invaluable. Hustle is a BI. To be honest, I wish it didn't have a place in entrepreneurship. I call it the workaholic haze where you're so in the business and you're so in the trenches and you're so focused on the clients that years of your life can just fly by. If anyone watching this interview takes anything away, try to learn from people who have broken the hustle equation. Even though we're both still working on bettering our business and bettering our ability to have more freedom, We've still made such great strides. You said to me right before this call, right before we started this interview, that you have been traveling so much for the last few weeks, months, that you've been able to do your work in the two days of the week and then be traveling and doing all these other things. Somehow you're doing it. The fact that you can run a business or an empire the size that you are and be able to have only two days a week to do it is massive. I try to put my client facing work into two days out of the week and have our team helping with the deliverable behind the scenes and then have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to work on what's next. What is the next thing for our business? What's our big picture strategy? What are we doing with marketing? What are new things that we're going to release or how are we going to do things differently or better? And so I think the vast majority of entrepreneurs are working more than five days a week, not sleeping
eating that much, glued to your computer or out in the field serving clients, not eating that well, not taking care of ourselves and not working out. You've got to start somewhere. And the first step is prioritizing your health. Going from a place of hustle to strategy. Let's find a better way. Let's make a better strategy. Let's do things differently. Being productive doesn't mean you work more. It yeah. means that you do more with the time that you say, I'm going to work. And I did have that fearful mentality of, I have to do this and I have to say yes to all these clients and I have to do all the things. Otherwise, I'm not going to make money. And when I decided to get firm with what my no's were going to be and really strategize how I was going to spend my time, my profits increased. It almost doubled within that three month time frame that I made a shift. And it was just because it's not that I was doing less work. I was just doing it better, more effectively and getting the sleep, getting the rest, prioritizing self care allowed me to show up better versus drained and eyes going cross eyed because you've been up so long. And I think if anyone watching this, you're afraid to make that shift. It is a fear. Get over it because it's going to make you 10 times better. And it's not even going to just work for your business. You're going to be better in all other aspects of your life. I wish that I had a mentor back then that could have given me tips. I just had to figure it out by making mistakes and then trying other things. And that's why mentorship, I think, is so important too for entrepreneurs, especially now where, you know, so many people have different courses and coaching. The thing that's different about now versus then is because everybody's doing it. It's like, like how do you know who to trust? And the cost of coaches are getting so much higher. This is what I've learned. There are a lot of coaches out there and a lot of them are good. A lot of them are not. The first thing you have to do is identify what you need help with. That's the most important thing. You need to find a person who specializes in that. Now, taking it one step deeper, you also have to make sure that person is actually good at what they're doing. Because I could tell you how many times I've spent ten, fifteen thousand dollars on a coach or a program and been disappointed or not gotten the result that I wanted. There might be a moment where I'm the right fit for someone. There might be a moment when you're the right fit for someone. There might be a moment when someone else with a different type of marketing is the right fit. So first. First, figure out what you're trying to do, then make sure that person is legit. Go on their website, look for testimonials, ask if you can email with or message with or talk to other people who have gotten the result that you've got because there's a lot of people out there that are positioning themselves as an expert, but they yeah. don't actually deliver. It doesn't mean that all coaches are awful just because you worked with one and it's not the right fit. Maybe it was the wrong coach at the wrong time, or maybe it was the wrong solution to the challenge that you're having. So that yeah. goes for everyone. And this is actually so perfectly timed. But how do you handle moments of like self doubt or uncertainty? What do you do when you're trying to make a decision and you're like, oh, let me figure this out? So there's two people that really help me when I'm in moments like this, my therapist and my husband, and they both serve very different purposes. I definitely struggle with like self sabotage, um, imposter syndrome. Often, I think it's because of I shared my story with you all. I was a college dropout. I don't have a degree in what I do. I've only learned through experience. And sometimes I feel overly blessed to the point of how is this actually happening to me right now? I get to a point where it doesn't seem like it's real or I don't feel like I deserve it. So when this happens, there's two things I do. First, I tell my husband, I'll text him in that moment and I'm like, hey, when you come home, I just need to vent. Or if you're free now, I just need to vent. I'm really going through it because at the end of the day, life is just choices, right? You can either do it or not do it. So whether you have doubt that you can or can't, or you're fearful that you should or shouldn't, you have to pick one. I love that. Can you share some of the biggest wins that you've had as a business owner? Yeah. So I would say the number one is actually something that I just recently did, which was launching our All About It app. I've always wanted an app. Getting the app done was a six month process. And for me, the last step of the things that I said I wanted to check off before I went into 2024. So that was major. I always wanted something that I could say is mine and where people can go and get access to all the things, courses, coaching, it was a big accomplishment for me personally because I never thought I was going to get there. I wanted to quit so many times in the process. So that making it to 10 years of entrepreneurship was really great because the day that I dropped out of college, for me, it wasn't an option of whether I was going to fail or succeed. I was like, I have to make it work. But I didn't have a picture of what that would look like. When I hit the 10 year mark, it was really this full circle moment for me to be able to really appreciate 
everything that I've not only done within my business, but as an individual, even from growing up in a very broken home and not believing in marriage or true love to having the best partner ever, couldn't think of a better person to spend my life with. And everything that we've accomplished together was really great. And it's just cool to be like, wow, for 10 years, I didn't give up when I could have. And now we're here. How do you define success for yourself and your business? And has that changed over time? So it's funny that this is the question you're asking right now, (laughs) because after I gave my answers to the last one, I love that I didn't mention anything about money. When I feel successful, Successful, that means I feel full, I feel peaceful, I feel relaxed and calm, and I feel blessed. And blessings to me can come in the form of money, right? But we do as a company obviously set benchmarks. Hey, we should be here by this time. The goal is to double here or there. But what I realized was at some of my times in life, especially before meeting my husband, when I had made the most money I've ever made, I was the most unhappy. Money does not equal joy, happiness, or success. So if I were to sum it up in one word, the word I would use is impact. Impact, it definitely would be the answer because I think when your focus is on impact, all the other tangible things like money will come and result because of you being intentional and doing the right thing. The first thing you focused on was how it feels because we can be successful and making tons of money, but if we're frantic and living the workaholic hustle culture lifestyle, and we're not really living in our bodies or experiencing our lives, then how are we going to have the most impact that we can have? When you say brand, what does brand mean to you? So build a brand that you love. Where does that brand extend through? It's not just visuals, but what is it? This is why my motto is create a life you love. When I think of build a brand, you can be a stay at home mom and create a really great brand that makes an impact and makes a difference. So when I think of brand, I think of having something that is making an impact in the world for the better. And typically, whatever that brand is should be something that is uniquely tied to you. It is authentic to you and has something to do with you and your story. I think that so many people think having a brand is I'm going to start this business. If you say, oh, who are you and what do you do? They name off all of these things, but none of those things actually come back to the core of who you are and what your mission is. So another word I want to use is your why. I think so often people start things or do things for money and they don't even know their reasoning. And if you don't know your why, then you don't know your who, which is who you can serve. You don't know your how, which is how you can serve them, which therefore you're not making an impact. So when I think brand, I think your why, I think impact, and it's ultimately how you're living your life and how you're cultivating your space and your mentality to be able to live fully. The word brand is is difficult because if I'm speaking to a group of professionals, brand is going to look one way. If I'm speaking to a group of creatives, brand is going to look one way. And if you're speaking to everyday people who work nine to five jobs, Bob's brand is going to look another way. What is the legacy that you want to leave for the world? What kind of impact do you want to make? You know, what's funny. I feel like I constantly ask myself this because I think in different seasons, it changes, right? Like when I was having my dance studios, my goal was to be able to say that I helped X amount of women look in the mirror and love the skin they're in. In the space that I'm in now, I want all the little girls who grew up like I did or was in a situation that I was in where they don't have the resources, they don't have the experience, they don't have the money, they don't have the knowledge, but they do have this dream and this desire. I want them to be able to do something, whether it's a service, it's a course, it's a mentorship, it's a freebie that they got from YouTube or Instagram and be able to make an impact on their life. I think the question that I always ask my husband and we ask this to each other a lot are the things that we're doing equaling up to the mark that we want to make on the world. How do you stay in alignment with that? And I think that being a light in the dark is the main thing. So it's one, I want to be known as someone who has shown up authentically, transparently, and open and honest about who I am and what I feel I'm here to do. If I can inspire someone else to not think so much about the money or the version of success that social media sells, but to just show up authentically and use their voice and use their story to connect and impact with others, then that's all I can ask for. What's next for you in your world and what are you working on now? 
This is pretty big news and I haven't made this public or, or really shared it with anyone outside of my husband and the person who I'm training, but I am hiring a full-time CEO for all about your brand so that I can fully step away and focus on the spaces business because it's my baby right now. I always had this dream of when we started a family and when I had kids, I only wanted to do things that were creative and fun and stress-free. So that's exactly what I'm currently transitioning into. That's a major thing for me is hiring a full-time CEO to take over the day-to-day -day that I handle. And it's really scary because I know that my business started from a personal space. A lot of people come to me for me. So what does that even look like? And is this even even possible, but definitely the role of CEO, I'm ready to give to someone else. And this person has been working with me the entire 10 years I've been in business. So I have lots of faith in her and feel really good about it. It's exciting because it's going to really free me up and allow me to step more into the home design space. So I'm really excited for that. That's awesome. And by the way, it is possible. So the way I explain that in our world yeah. is that you're going from the CEO or the manager to visionary. Yeah, Which that you get to be a part of the overall direction, the overall strategy, any piece that you want to dip your pinky toe in and be a part of, you'll be able to do that. And I love that we're both like at that place right now, because I'm at that place with our business too. It's possible. <laughs> and you'll be able to do whatever you want. As far as when you set it up properly, you'll be able to jump back in whenever you want and put your finger on the pulse and be involved, but also to build something that you can take a huge step back from and enjoy other new things that you want to create. I love all of yeah. that. I'm so excited for you. I hope you guys all enjoyed this interview. Uh, let us know in the comments. We would love to hear from you. What were your favorite takeaways from today? Was there anything that popped out for you as something that either resonated or helped give you a shift in your mindset? We'd love to hear. And thank you so much, Brianna, for being here and spending so much time with me. It was so much fun.